Spring portal season is here for college football in Iowa already with some news coming out of Iowa City even prior to Saturday's final spring practice of the spring season. We'll talk about news on Jacob Bostic, Iowa receiver Jacob Bostic, announcing his departure from the program in just a second. And kind of a disturbing stat. I know we've talked about receiver departures and Iowa's attrition at that position for quite some time, but these are amazing numbers I want to share with you in just a second. But first, I want to ask you to do something for me. Could you please go over to our Facebook page and give us a follow, give us a like? It would help a lot. The more we can get engagement on social media, engagement on the YouTube channel, engagement's really what helps make this platform grow. We appreciate your help, even if you're not active on Facebook. Head over to our Facebook page. You can find the link in the description from the Hawkeye of the Storm on Facebook. Click the follow and perhaps even turn notifications on so you know when we post, just like you do here on YouTube. Again, thank you in advance for liking the page on Facebook. So, news breaking on this Tuesday that Iowa football receiver Jacob Bostic has entered the transfer portal. The portal window now open. Iowa needs to get those scholarship numbers back down to 85, so expect more news along this front. This news, I think, caught some people off guard. I had someone text me earlier today and say, hey, did this surprise you? This kid just spoke to the Iowa media here this past week. And my simple response is, no, nothing surprises me anymore with college football, the transfer portal, et cetera. Um, I think it's probably fair to say this has nothing to do with NIL opportunity. Here's a young man who was a decently recruited kid at a high school, albeit a three-star out of Illinois, who had a couple other decent offers, but in general, um, he was not real highly recruited. Illinois had an offer in on Jacob Bostic. Louisville had an offer in on Jacob as well. Cincinnati, uh, and that's, I think, the, the gist of the uh, Power 5 offers. I guess Pittsburgh had an offer in on him too, but I don't think the whole NIL calling card is what drew Jacob into the portal. So what did? Well, again, Iowa does need to trim scholarships down. Did Iowa kind of uh, give him or make it clear the writing on the wall. It sounds like Jarrett Bowie, the uh, second-year kid out of Tampa, Florida, has really come on strong, we hope at least. That's the narrative out there with this wide receiver room this spring. Although, Bostic appearing before the media this past week with an indication that he was finally healthy was at least a sign that perhaps he could uh, jump into that X role at some point. He was a bigger receiver at 6'1", 6'2", and had struggled with injuries. Came in in 20. 22 missed a lot of I think fall camp that year and then also spring practice last year this was his first real spring practice at Iowa and so yet another receiver bites the dust I'll be anxious to see does he end up somewhere else in the country or does he go back even closer to home again he's from Palatine uh, Illinois now he did redshirt in 2022 not sure if he would have played that was a pretty poor wide receiver room in 22 but again he was hurt and according to the Iowa Athletics website he did show up in five games in 2023 however Bostic when announcing his departure from the program here earlier today did state that he has four years of eligibility remaining so um, whatever that means does it involve a medical hardship waiver Um, of course he doesn't have a COVID year available to him he was not playing at Iowa he was not at Iowa in 2020 so he is reporting that he's got four years of eligibility remaining, I would think at least the three, based on his activity so far at Iowa. And a very well-spoken kid. Go back and listen to his interview last week. Had nothing but good things to say about his teammates and about Tim Lester's offense and whatnot. So was the decision made before appearing before the media last week? Who knows? Was it made here in the last couple of days? Can't tell you. Um, is it possible that uh, he was just specifically asked to address the media. Usually that's how it works. I don't think these kids are coming forward and asking that they appear before the media. So perhaps uh, he had not informed the staff of his intentions at that point. I wouldn't think that Iowa would put him before the media if they knew he was leaving uh, in the next week. But uh, regardless, he's got a good head on his shoulders and wish him nothing but the best. I do want to run through some numbers that I think are rather disturbing. We've talked about the attrition at that wide receiver position. And it doesn't take a genius to understand why, or at least a big part of the reason why Iowa struggles to retain scholarship receivers. But listen to these numbers. These are incredible. Since 2021, all right, that 2021 season, here are the guys who have left Iowa, all right? Jacob Bostic, Deontay Vines, Arlen Bruce, 
Keegan Johnson, Charlie Jones, Tyrone Tracy Jr., Desmond Hudson, Quavon Matthews, Calvin Lockett, Oliver Martin, Brody Brecht gave up football, headed over to, to baseball. Not going to put that on the football program by any means. I think that was clearly a good decision for Brody Brecht. But that's those are all the guys that have left Iowa, not finished their careers at Iowa. Scholarship players that have been at Iowa and transferred out left Iowa. The only players since 2022 that have finished their careers at Iowa at the wide receiver position. Nico Ragaini, Max Cooper. And Max Cooper really didn't play at Iowa, with the exception being uh, some special team snaps. Maybe he got in a little bit late in some games at receiver, but in large part, Max Cooper did not work into the fold at Iowa. So even if you take 2021 out, because I know some people will say, hey, you didn't mention Amir Smith-Marset and Brandon Smith that graduated left Iowa after the 21 season. Okay, let's just go back to 2022. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players, not counting Brody Brecht, scholarship wide receivers that have not finished their careers at Iowa, and two, two guys on scholarship at wide receiver that have finished their careers at Iowa. Of course, Iowa, the guys on the scholarship right now that are still here at Iowa at that position, Caleb Brown, who transferred in from Ohio State, Seth Anderson, who was also a transfer in, Alex Moda, who's going into his second year, Dayton Howard, he's going into his second year, Jarrett Bowie, he is going into his second year. But one would have to think that it's likely based on these numbers that most of those guys will finish their careers elsewhere. And uh, we go back to the decision-making and making uh, John Budmeyer the wide receivers coach. I don't need to belabor that point, but you can see some of the concern with having a sort of an unenthusiastic hire, I think, um, as far as a promotion, not because of who John Budmeyer is as a person or who he is as a coach, but just the simple fact that he does not have experience coaching that position. And does he turn that wide receiver room around? I sure hope so. We sure hope so. But boy, it's been rough. And most of that came under the watch. Of, well, all of it came under the watch of Kelton Copeland and, of course, offensive coordinator Brian Ferentz, but ultimately head man Kirk Ferentz. So we'll talk more about that number, that trend, I'm sure, here in future videos. But wanted to, to uh, give you that information on Jacob Bostic entering the portal and expect more portal news as we uh, head into the final week. Well, we are now in the final week of spring practice for Iowa football. We'll talk to you next time. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Have a great day. We'll see you Saturday at the open spring practice in Iowa City.